to you. Very simple song. I'll never give my heart to another, give myself to another, but my heart belongs to you. Oh yeah. What a, what a wonderful Christmas gift. You give your heart to Jesus. My heart belongs to you.
sing it with me. My heart belongs to you. to God that he found me deep in the darkness of my life. He saved me and he loved me and it's because he loved me I'm able to love him. Amen. It is a joy to have Brother Lenny Lindsay with us. Last year he wasn't able to be here with us and just messed up my whole Christmas. And so I am glad that he is here. Won't y'all make him welcome as he comes and ministers That I know that he loved me so. He paid my debt on Calvary. Oh, I have a friend. Oh, his name is Jesus. King of kings and Lord and Prince of Peace. Oh, I have a friend. Oh, his name is Jesus. And it lives right in my heart Oh, in my heart Yes, in my heart He lives and he rules and he reigns right in my heart Oh, and since that day he came My life hasn't been all the same To me he gave a brand new start Oh, I have a friend name is Jesus, King of kings and Lord and Prince of Peace. Oh, I have a friend, and his name is Jesus, and he lives right in my heart. Oh, in my heart, yes, in my heart. He lives and he rules and he reigns right in my heart. Oh, in my heart. Yes, in my heart. He lives and he rules and he reigns. Oh, he lives and he rules and he reigns. He lives and he rules and he reigns. Not living, ruling, reigning in your heart, you just do it. Another little song I wrote, I think you'll like. So take away the dark clouds, heart that stand in my way, 
And give me all the light of day Oh Lord, and just lead me on For in the palm of your hand Lord, I know I can stand So Lord, take my hand Oh, and lead me on Lead me on Lord, lead me on Oh, through the night I pray Give me the light of day And though the storms arise Give me peace inside and in your love abide Oh Lord, lead me on So take away the dark clouds Lord, that stand in my way And give me, oh, the light of day Oh Lord, and just lead me on For in the palm of your hand Lord, I know I can stand, so Lord, take my hand, oh, and lead me on, lead me on, Lord, lead me on, oh, though life's angry time, try to push me aside. And it's raging fall Says all hope is gone Then Lord take my hand Oh and lead me on So take away the dark clouds Lord that stand in my way And give me oh, the light of day Oh Lord it just lead me on for in the palm of your hand, Lord, I know I can stand. So, Lord, take me hand. Oh, Lord, take me hand. Oh, Lord, take my hand. Oh, and keep me on. Bleeding and dying on the cheery pool, and he poured in the oil and the wine. David saw him as the good shepherd. Isaiah saw him high and lifted up. I saw him stooping for reds like me. Something from him. Yes, he poured in the oil and the wine. Oh, the kind that restoreth my soul. He found me bleeding and dying on the cheery cold. And he poured in the oil and the wine. I need some more. What he's pouring Just feel this vessel To the brim So I can pour out to others 
and he can fill me up again. Yes, he poured in the oil and the wine. Oh, the kind that restoreth my soul. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho road, and he poured in the oil. They say that heaven's pretty and living here is too. But if they said that I would have to choose between the two, I'd go home. Yes, I'd go home where I belong. But while I'm here, I'll serve him gladly and sing him all of my songs. I'm here, but not for long. When I'm feeling lonely and when I'm feeling blue, such a joy to know that I am only passing through. I'm going home Yes, I'm going home Where I belong Sometimes when I'm dreaming It comes as no surprise If you'd look, you'd see that homesick feeling in my eyes I'm going home Yes, I'm going home Where I belong While I'm here, I'll serve him gladly And sing him all of my songs I'm here, but not for long. When I'm feeling lonely and when I'm feeling blue, such a joy to know that I am only passing through. I'm going home. Yes, I'm going home. Where I belong One day I'll be sleeping When death knocks on my door I'll awake to find that I'm Not homesick anymore Cause I'll be home Yes, I'll be home where I belong Where I belong
last year. The reason I didn't make it, I, I was in the hospital the Wednesday before I was supposed to get ready to come up here, down here. And uh, I called Brother Packett. I said, well, they got me. I'm in the hospital here. They're going to keep me tonight. And, and I, I think they sent me home with a monitor and all that stuff. And I went in. Then, though, I was having some problems with my heart, but I had dizziness and all that kind of stuff, and it happened to be that my blood, uh, my heart rate had dropped down low, and they found I had a licking heart valve, and, and so uh, we all prayed, and everybody prayed. Y'all prayed down here. So when they give me another echocardiogram, the next time I went, and I went up, and the doctors looked at it and said, that's good, that's good, and, and got called out of the room for a second. I'm still on here. Man. You got to keep it up. You got to keep it up here. I've been so used to having that on my ear. Looks <laughs> like a difference, don't it? <laughs> so whatever. I said, good in relation to what? When she come back in, she said, well, it's not leaking anymore. We give God all the praise and the glory for it. Amen and amen. Do have CDs, and I don't have that last song recorded, but the others would do. And all the CDs is ten dollars. I got a, a DVD that's a twenty dollar DVD that's only ten dollars. Why? Because it's easier to figure all the way across. I don't have a middleman. I don't have to do that. So, but just because you get it for ten dollars, you remember it's still a twenty dollar CD. John Minnick said it was a good thing that Gaither puts out. He ought to know he works with Gaither. Hey, God's good, isn't he? Now, in a little bit, whenever I stay close to the end, I'm going to call Sister Sister Janet up, and then I want the worship team, or the prayer warriors, I mean, the, the prayer team, I want you to come up the same time she does. That way we can have it all together, okay? Where's Brenda? Brenda Joyce? Oh, she's the very back. Bless her heart. I, that's okay. Yes, sir. You have to get here early to get that seat. We're going to be taking the text out of 2 Kings 13 and 21. And I've got a portion of it already written down here, but they put the whole scripture up here a while ago. And if you're going to do that, okay. If you don't, I'll read my portion and we get going. All right, and when the man was let down, oh, we go up here. And it came to pass as they were burying a man that, behold, they spied a band of men. That was Moabites now. And they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Now that is my text right there. And when the man was let down, touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Now when we read the first chapter of Acts in the New Testament, it would be well if we go back and read the first two the chapters of Second Kings. And there's a reason for that. There's a parallel here. The same, both begins the same way. The master is caught away and the disciple is given the promise that greater things shall you do. A mantle of power is dropped from above. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you, praise you, and honor you, and thank you for this time of being in this service with this group of saints of God and Christians. We ask, Lord, that you would awaken, Lord, let the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ just fall on us this place this morning, Lord, and resurrect us, Lord, that we would be set on fire for you. We ask these things in Jesus' sweet holy name, amen and amen. And it came to pass when Elijah uh, would be taken up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elijah said unto Elisha, What shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? Elisha requested from Elijah, This I pray, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And the divine law, according to your faith, be it so, was fulfilled to the very decimal point in Elisha's ministry. Exactly twice as many miracles are recorded in the story of Elisha as recorded in the story of Elijah. But it took the circumstances surrounding this text to work out the exact multiplication. In 2 Kings 13, 21, And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. 
Now Elijah had raised back to life the son of his host, the Seraphite lady. The story is told in uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. And later on, Elisha raised back to life the son of his host, the Shudamite woman. And that story is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 4. But if you remember, Elisha had asked for a double portion. And God kept faith with this man who so changed the history of Israel so much. But it took the strangest miracle recorded in the Bible to make it come to pass. You let me just remind you that when God ordains something, it will happen. You can count on it. It may not be in your time, but he still will, will fulfill it. Amen? Elijah was carried to heaven in a whirlwind. Some folks thought it was a fiery chariot. No, if you remember, the chariot separated and Elisha, and, and, and Elijah was carried up in a whirlwind. But Elisha died in bed like other men. Now, Josephus, that great historian of the Jews, uh, tells us that Elisha had a great funeral. Both the king and the people paid every honor within their power to the memory of a great man who had been for so many years the mightiest influence in Israel. And in times of emergency was the strongest arm for protection in the whole nation. And because of the nation's love for him, he was given a state funeral. But almost immediately after uh, uh, the death of Elisha, evil days fell upon Israel. The Moabites began guerrilla warfare. They plundered the crops. They ran off the herds and the flocks. And it kind of came to pass like this. Elisha had been buried according to the customs of the time. He was placed in a cave on the side of a hill. It had been hewed out of a rock. And sometime later there was another death in the community. And the neighbors was carrying a man to bury him. The Israelite at that time uh, didn't use coffins, and I don't think some of them don't now. But they wrapped the bodies in, in, in bandages and wrap, and they, they placed it in the grave that way. So uh, suddenly these men that was carrying the, the dead man to, to bury him, looked and they saw a band of Moabite raiders coming in, and they wanted to get rid of this man in a hurry, so they saw this open sepulcher, and they just took and kind of tossed that old boy up in it, and it happened to be the sepulcher of Elisha, and when the dead man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet, and I'll guarantee the Moabites couldn't have caught the boys that just put him in there. This miracle is, is unique among Bible miracles. Those that's most like it is it, kind of the time when if you remember Jesus was going to the, the, the rulers of the synagogue's house to heal his, his daughter that was sick. And, but there was a lady that had an issue of blood for many years, you remember. And as Jesus was going, she pressed through the crowd and reached and touched the hem of his garment was healed. Another similar was whenever old Peter was, was walking along and, and, and the shadow that, uh, from the sun that hit him and the shadow fell on people and they were healed. Another was still whenever uh, Paul, uh, they took handkerchiefs from Paul and, and placed him on sick folks and they were healed. But these were all living. These miracles were wrought through the direct contact with an actual person of a living, personality of a living human being. But notice this, Elisha had been dead and buried. And this miracle was wrought through the contact of his dead and decaying body. Here was a prophet whose dead body prophesied. You know, as I look at this, this story, there are several spiritual and valid lessons we can glean from this account. One is this. The influence of a good man or a good woman does not terminate with life here on earth. Some of those old camp meeting days going by the rafters made to ring by the saints of God singing, I live on, I live on, through eternity I live on. They sung it with the faith of this story. This is so true in the lives of so many of the great men of our nation. Would you care to say that the influence of George Washington ceased when his body was buried at Mount Vernon? On the contrary, his influence is greater today than ever before. 
Even I have copied a couple of quotes from George Washington and I placed it in the back of the leaf of one of my old study Bibles and I noticed it here the other day. It said, it's only at trees bearing good fruit that stones are thrown. You know, sometimes you got to be a country to understand that, don't you? Because when I was a kid, we would go back in the woods. There was an old house place back in there, and there was a big old, uh, old pear tree. And the deers would come in and eat all they could reach up to get. And, and if I get old people, may have come and got some. But, but there was two pears left up. There were some pears left. It was too high for us to get. You know what we did? We found sticks and thorns and everything we could to try to, to knock them pears out. So I, I could identify with what George Washington say. It's only trees bearing good fruit that stones are thrown. There was another one that, that I really lived by when I was a young man. It helped me a lot. It said, associate your, uh, yourself with men of good reputation, for it's better to be alone than to be in bad company. You see, these, these was written in, in, in the old Union Reader, and this was actually used in public schools. I think it might be great if they'd drag them back up and start using them again. In one of the places uh, where Brent and I stayed on one of our tours up north, I picked up a book on a nightstand, and there was a story about George Washington in it, and I, I read it, and I liked it, so I copied it down. The story title was A Gentleman is a Gentleman. George Washington and General Lafitte was walking together one morning when they were greeted on the path by a slave. The old man paused and tipped his hat and said, Good morning, General Washington. Immediately, George Washington removed his hat, bowed and answered, Good morning to you, and I hope you have a pleasant day. General Lafitte was shocked, but when he recovered his composure, he exclaimed, Why did you bow to a slave? Washington smiled and replied, I would not allow him to be a better gentleman than I. In our day, we rarely hear, uh, we rarely refer to men as being gentle. But gentleness is a characteristic result from the indwelling spirit of the living God. And I think it behooves you and I to exhibit that same spirit of God to, to, in our lives to whomever we come in contact with. The Bible's full of this teaching. None of us lived ourselves. None of us died or ourselves. And again, would you say that when the assassination bullet uh, smote Abraham Lincoln that this great son of Illinois ceased to live and exercise reviving powers? No, sir. He still inspires and awakens in, a, in Americans' hearts a spirit of self-denial and patriotic impulses. Are we foolish enough to say that the lives of John Wesley and Charles Spurgeon no longer touches men? What they have said for God is preached more today than ever before. Their influence and ministry are still lifting dead souls of men towards spiritual re rebirth and useful lives for God. John Wesley has not ceased to live because his body was buried over 200 years ago. It was on March the, uh, 2nd, 1791, that 87-year-old John Wesley lay dying. His friends around him, West, Wesley grasped their hands and repeatedly, farewell, farewell. As the end, at the end, the very end, he said, the best, is, the best of all is God is with us. He lifted his arms and raised his feeble voice again and repeatedly repeated these words. The blessing of all is God is with us. You see, I believe our departed loved ones still reach out and touch our lives for good. You and I know it's truth. Some of us in this auditorium would not have had a, some of us in this auditorium would have long since been lost forever had it not been for the very fact that our mothers and our fathers, our grandpas and grandmas and other, some other saints of God prayed for us. It's followed you and I all through our lives. Remember this. Unanswered prayers prayed to God 
does not die at the death of the person that prayed them. You still with me? Elisha is a good example of that. No one can deny that these things are true, that they do happen all the time, and that leads to another thought I would like to discuss. It is certain and serious and an important question for us to ask ourselves. Is the life that we are now living of such character that after we are dead, will others be influenced by it for good? Will, will men bless God for your life or will they spit at your memory? You see, you and I have the power to decide which it will be right now on this side of the grave. Think of what bitterness some must experience in their dying hours to know that their lives of rebelliousness toward God has already shaped and hardened the destiny of their children and driven them toward crime and dishonesty. Jesus kind of told a story similar to that. He said there was a rich man who died and went to hell. If you remember that, Lazarus and the rich man. And when he found there was a great gulf between him, himself and paradise, he begged that someone might return from the dead. Send Lazarus back, he said, because I got five brothers. Send him back that he can warn them where they won't come to this place. No doubt, it came back to him that during his lifetime, all his association with his brothers had been evil. And now he feels that even hell would be a little less unbearable if he no longer had to remember day and night without ceasing that he not only lost his own soul, but he'd also been the direct influence and in destroying five others. All that has been said leads to the next thought to be considered. I think we all want to be able to live the life that will influence people who touch our lives for good now and when we're gone. But such life must come from the one whose death has done more for this world than the death of anyone else, and that's the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now the man who was buried in the Grave Elisha was not revived until his body came in personal contact with the bones of the prophet. Just so, though you've been dead in trespasses and sin, you may live again to righteousness when you're brought into personal contact with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. See, the New Testament is bold in declaring that he that hath the Son hath life. Just one touch can awaken all that is dead and unresponsive toward our Heavenly Father. See, Jesus Christ is more than a memory or a symbol. No one dares speak of him as the late Jesus Christ, a one-time carpenter's assistant. His influence is not the influence of a short period of time. It's not a fading, indirect reference in a dusty history book. No, in fact... He ever liveth to make intercession for us. The lives of multitude millions have been raised from the depths of immorality and corruption to new dimensions of usefulness is proof beyond challenge. His tomb is an incubator. The dead live again. This is the incomparable supreme proof Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said himself, I am come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. This was the entire purpose of his death. He died that you and I might live. I know I speak the truth about you. When I say way down inside, you want your life to count for good. 
You want to leave behind something more than bones and unpaid bills. You want to leave behind a life, a life that will never cease to be an encouragement to others, right? You know, we need to pray prayers kind of like this. Lord, give me a legacy of righteousness. Make my impact greater than my lifespan. Give me fruit that remains. Possibly the greatest compliment that I ever received came from my own daughter. When some folks was commenting on how hard it was for them to comprehend the love of a heavenly father when they didn't have one. So my daughter commented and said, I have no problem comprehending the love of my heavenly father because I've lived with it with him and my daddy because I've lived with him and my daddy and it humbled me because she had a loving father it made it easy for her to grasp a heavenly father's love you know I don't know what your life won't you stand with me I don't know what your life shows but I want to ask the question what will it leave nobody else can determine that for you but yourself and I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've been to. I don't know if what's your, behind your life. But guess what? It's not what's behind that's going to count. It's what's up here in front that's going to count. It's what you do from this day forward. So right now, you can really make a change. You can start leaving a path that your kids and grandkids could follow. And it would lead them to a life following Jesus. It's not too late. Are you ready to make some changes? Or should I say, are you ready to make, let God make some changes in you? I believe I am. I've been doing the best I can, but I can still improve, can't you? All of you just want to improve in Jesus. I want you just to come stand around the front with us. And if some of you need some special prayer, I want you to come and just put your hands in the hands of our, our, our leaders that's standing here. But I want you to come and, and let us take this to opportunity to right here to say, Lord, I want your resurrection power to fall on me. Resurrect me, Lord, in a new life that I can be an example for folks to follow. That I can set a path that my kids and grandkids could follow. God, I want a life, a character, my life and character to show that I love Jesus, that He loves me. What is your life showing? Come on, let's stand down here and, and get together. If you want somebody to pray with you, come right on in the prayer warrior right here. They're going to